Hi guys, it's Joe, and this video is going to be part three of my EXS24 sampler tutorials. I know it's been a little while since I've done the last one, but there's just a lot of things to look into, and I wanted to make sure it was all accurate. So in this we're going to be looking at all the routing and modulation, so looking at the destination, the via, and the source. I've just loaded up the Yamaha Grand Piano from Logic, just to show you as a demonstration what everything does. So just as a quick explanation of these three, the destination is basically what you'll be modulating. So if we select volume, then it will start to change the volume. If you select pitch, it will start to change the pitch. And if you click on that, you can see all the different parameters that you can modulate. And how we get them to change is by using the source. And to see all the sources, you just click on here and it brings up this drop down menu. And these will determine how the destination is changed. So it'll make a lot more sense when you hear it. So just for an example, let's say I want to change how the volume sounds on this. I want it to fade in and out quite slowly. So to do that, I'll just select volume on our destination. And then next as the source, I'll choose LFO2. So the volume is essentially going to be modulated by this LFO. And the LFO will oscillate at whatever rate I set it to along here. So as I said, I want it to be quite slow, so I'm just going to set it to the rate of half a bar. So it will reach its peak volume and return over the course of half a bar. Now in order for this to actually do anything, we need to use this little green slider. So this controls how intense the modulation is, and this intensity can be controlled as well by selecting a parameter from VIA. And when we select something from here, an orange slider will appear alongside the green. But we'll look at that more in a minute. So if I hit play now, nothing's going to sound any different. And to actually start the modulation, we need to use this green slider. So now if I change this green slider, that's when it'll start to make a difference. So I'm just going to bring it in there and slowly bring it up. So you can hear it's very intense right at the top here, however when I start bringing it back down it's not as obvious but it's still occurring. I change this as well so it becomes even more obvious. This is the basic principle of this entire section. So now we're going to do the same thing but with pitch. And we can actually just put this in bypass by hitting this little BP button here. We'll do the same thing, we'll go over here, go over to pitch, and then we'll set envelope 1 as the source. So it'll be this envelope here. Uh, now this slide is going to be in cents because that's what pitch is measured in. Uh, it'll go all the way up to 1200 cents and all the way down to minus 1200. Uh, so that's an octave. There are 100 cents per semitone, so 12 semitones an octave, 1200 an octave. So as it stands, I've got it at minus 1200, so it's going to be decreasing the pitch when we start to mess around with the envelope. So with everything down over here, it's just going to sound normal. I'm just going to slowly start to bring in the attack. Okay, it's pretty obvious what's happening there, in that the pitch is going down. And what the attack is doing is determining how quickly it goes to or reaches minus 1200 cents. So, as you could hear right at the start, when it's all the way down here, you can't hear it because it's happening so fast. You start to hear it now. And then when you have it at the much higher values, you can really hear it starting to just drop down. But you can also hear it's pinging back to the original pitch. And to change this, we can use the decay. So if we start bringing that back in, this changes how long it takes for the pitch to go back to its original frequency. So the reason it was just snapping back before really quickly was because it was on zero, so it was immediately going back. However, when we introduce some decay to it, then it starts to make it more gradual. Uh, next, we have sustain. This determines how far the decay actually goes back. So if we put it on the maximum, then it will actually just stay at the lowest pitch. However, if we have it at 50%, then it will stop halfway in between, so it will stop on 600 semitones. And that's now what the decay is moving towards. And as far as I can tell, the release doesn't actually do anything in this situation. Certainly not anything obvious. And this will actually be a good opportunity to demonstrate the via option. 
So if we just select this and go to LFO2, you can see we now have an orange and green slider. So this is our maximum intensity, and this is our minimum intensity. So we still have it going to minus 1200 at first, but we also ha now have it going to positive 1200. So we're now spreading over two octaves. Uh, and you'll kind of see what I mean when I hit play. I'm just going to change this a little bit. So it's now both decreasing and increasing in pitch. And what we send this to will, again, it will change depending on what we send it to. So in this case, it's going to be oscillating at this rate as well. You have to take that into consideration when you're sending it through an envelope too, because you have several different parameters working alongside one another. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at panning. So I'll just sit this in bypass again, go into destination, pan, and then we'll send it to envelope one again. Now what the green slider here does is that if we have it all the way down, it's just going to be on the right, whereas if it's all the way up, it's just on the left. So we're going to keep it on the left for now, and then we're going to start playing around with the envelope. So the attack is how long it will take it to go from left to right. So if we start to bring that in. But as you can hear, what was happening before with the pitch is that it's jumping back to left immediately because we haven't set the decay. So if we bring that up a little bit. it's slowly panning between left and right now. And again, similar with sustain, is if we bring that up to 50, then it's not gonna go all the way back, it's just gonna settle in the middle. And again, I don't think the release does anything. Now, if we run this through an LFO again, let's just have a look. It's much more obvious and it's much more continuous because when we were running it through an envelope, it would only bounce once, and it would have to wait for a new note to be played in order for it to pan again. Whereas this is very, very continuous. You don't need anything new to start playing, it just continuously repeats. Okay, next we're gonna look at the filters. So again, I'll just stick this in bypass, set the destination to filter cutoff, and then select the source as LFO3. Uh, in case you don't know what the cutoff is, it well, I'll show you. It's essentially an EQ cutoff, and it'll change where that cutoff is. Uh, as it's a high cut, if we have it all the way up, then it'll be at 20,000 hertz, not cutting anything out. Whereas if we have it all the way down, then it'll be at 20 hertz, cutting everything out. So we're losing high frequencies the more we move down. So we had it about here to begin with. So we have the whole body of the piano. So now if we move our green slider, you'll be able to hear that the LFO will be determining how quickly it will be going from its full open value to its closed value. minimum maximum now I just change the source to envelope as well and just see how that sounds So it's starting to sound less and less like a piano. And this is when you can start to make all your really interesting sounds is by combining all of these together. So with this, it should be a good start for you to start playing around with the parameters in here, as well as using it for your own samples. This also applies to a lot of synths as well, as they'll have similar routing. It's honestly best just to experiment and just see what works and see what doesn't. It's how you'll get some really weird and cool sounds. It's all just a learning process. Load in a random preset, play around with the routing using this as a guide, and then do it for your own samples and try it out on a synth like the ES2. You just have to think quite logically whilst using it. 
Setting the destination to pitch will adjust how the pitch changes, the slider changes how much the pitch will modulate, and whatever you route it to will change the pitch in its own way. So the LFO will make it sound different compared to the envelopes and so on. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.